you know, to get your heart and mind ready for worship. Bless the Lord. Just to be close to you is where I want to be. Let me hide myself inside your arms and find my destiny. Every step I take is one less step I need to be in your presence.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome you all to another Sunday here at the Model Church of God. Those who are streaming online through Facebook and YouTube, those who are in house, pray that all your needs will be met today and you will be blessed. Bless the Lord. Bow down and worship him. Thank you. 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Just give God your worship, brethren. Hallelujah. 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 Let me worship you. Hallelujah. We lift you up, God. You are worthy.
words in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing this morning from our hymnals, hymn 171. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. So we're going to stand, and you guys are going to stand as we sing to the glory and the honor of Jesus this morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Hymn 171. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? It's all right to wash in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood in the soul?
to just wash you this morning, whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Right where you're standing, we're going to be reading from our scripture. And it's going to be taken from St. Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to be reading together from verses 16 to 22. St. Matthew chapter 19, reading from St. Sorry, reading from verse 16 to verse 22. And we're all going to read together. We're not going to rush you, we're going to read together. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. When you found it, please say amen. And I invite everyone to stand while you are able to. In reference to the reading of God's holy word. So we begin. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Amen. Hearing the portion of God's holy word, we honor my name. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall it be, word of him. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord, you may be seated. In this scripture, Jesus said, the man was asking Jesus, everything I've done up until my youth, up until now, so what do I lack? But Jesus told him to go and sell your positions, your, your worldly positions. Take up your cross and follow me. And the man was so distraught and said, It's like he owned many homes and land and cattle and all these things. And it was so hard for him to do that. But Jesus said, If you take up your cross and follow me, then you will have eternal life in heaven. So let us not lay a church on earth. Let us lay up treasures in heaven, because greater is our reward in heaven. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want to sing this little chord before Reverend come to make us welcome this morning. And it's coming our first Sunday. And we just want to give the Lord all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. Because he made a great sacrifice. And truly he deserves our worship this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. John was in the city on the Lord's day when he heard a voice from heaven. This is what it says. I have come and I'll be The people can be here.
children, we welcome you. Bless the Lord. Give a big round of applause for all the children. Yes. And you notice so heat. We are the heat. They too are experiencing it. <laughs> but watch our little let's see. Praise God, Mary. Yes. Just fool it all herself. Praise God. And God is with us. So even in the heat, we can still give him our best praise because that's what he desires. By way of prayer request, Sister Lorna is asking for prayer and we want to remember her in a special way. Whatever it is, God is able today and we are trusting him to really give her the answer, give her the deliverance, give her that which she requires of him because God is able. Praise God. We have a number of external notices and I want to just bring them to your attention quickly and where we can. Let us give our best support whether financially, in our presence or even with prayer because God will do the rest. Amen. So the St. John's Road Church of God in Jamaica, pastored by Reverend Dexter Johnson, they will be having their youth convention starting this morning and they will have a youth rally at 5 p.m. this afternoon. So they are looking forward to our support for the rally, especially the ask for an item from our youth department and uh, certainly I will be going and you know me past youth age but I will be going so I would like those youth who can come and share an item whatever your item is whether singing, dancing, recital God will bless you as you share and so if you are able to attend let me know immediately after church it starts at 5, we like to be on time um, their service is usually long we may not stay for the entire service, but at least we want to show our presence and just be there. Some of their members were here yesterday supporting us in our prayer breakfast, and so we are grateful for that. And in return, let us do the same. Amen. Amen. So, on that note, let me thank everyone who has worked and has given your support yesterday to the prayer breakfast. And in terms of the winner of the person who sell the most tickets and so on, I leave that to Pastor John, who can do that at the appropriate time. But I, on behalf of the church, want to say a big thank you. And certainly, our brethren have worked. And so, we want to just thank you today. Praise God. Other invitations, the Pentecostal Redeemed Church of God, they are having their annual rally coming up on the 24th, starting at 7 p.m. They are requesting a choir, an item from our choir or from a group. Christ for Life Deliverance Tabernacle will be having their 15th pastoral anniversary ceremony for Apostle Carnegie. That will be on the 26th and it starts at 7 p.m. It's a blue and white affair. Then I want to bring to your attention for those who did not know that Minister Stacy Bennett, she has lost her mother. Um, that's um, Minister Bennett from Green Pastors. Most of us know her, you know, when we have functions, she represents Green Pastors. So her mother has passed. The funeral service will be on June the 27th at 10 a.m. And no, the viewing will be at 10 a.m. and the service will be at 11 a.m. And this will be at the Church of the Open Bible on Washington Boulevard. So we want to remember Sister Bennett in our prayers. And uh, also, you know, we are we're in contact. Give our words of support and comfort at this time. Other invitations coming in. The Valley of Light International Ministries at Palmer's Cross Main Street in, in Clarendon. They are having their one day youth convention on June the 12th and this starts at, at 10 a.m. and there will also be another session at 6.30 p.m. The theme is Youth Arise and this is from 1 John chapter 2 verse 14. They are looking for our support and they are hoping to see us and the motto is loving people, loving people, love people. So we want to bear that in mind. Amen. And uh, Pastor Davis was here yesterday moderating our service. This is her church. So I'm, I'm sure she's looking forward to seeing us. Praise God. Then the No Word International Ministry, pastored by Sam, Bishop Samuel Blackwood, who is the founder and the host pastor. They will be having...
Okay, New York with their first national convention and their second anniversary service, and this will be July the 10th to the 8th to the 17th. Under the theme, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. And the main text from Ecclesiastes 20, Ezekiel 22, verse 17 to 31. Please bear that in mind, and they're looking forward to our support. They said it will be Monday to Wednesday, and it will include um, day sessions beginning at 11 a.m. and night sessions at 7 p.m. So please bear that in mind. Give our best support, and the Lord will richly bless you. Internally, we want to announce that on the last Sunday of June, we are planning to have our baptism. Last Sunday of June, we are planning to have? Amen. Amen. And so let us pray towards that end and you'll get more details of that as the time progress. Rally comes up in November and so you'll get further instructions on that and we hope to have uh, persons working from now so that we will have a good return. Amen. The services of the week continues. Fasting in the church tomorrow at 10 a.m. And we'll have Bible study on Thursday night. We'll be here at the sanctuary. And we'll try to stream online for those who are not able to be here. So please come out. Last week we had a great time online and in the sanctuary. Very interactive. And we were truly blessed. We looked at the importance of forgiveness as expressed in the book of Romans. And I trust that we will learn this art. Yes, because it's very important. It's not something that we're born with. It's something that we have to learn. Amen? And the flesh in us don't forgive. So let us learn to forgive because it helps with our prayer life. It helps us to receive what God has in store for us. And it helps in God continually, continually blessing us. We're going to be having a leadership training on June the 18th, starting at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We want all our leaders and prospective leaders to be here. So if you are a leader, you are already enlisted to be here. If you are a prospective leader or you feel the urge that you need to lead, speak to Reverend French and see how you can tap into this training session. We'll be having external presenter. So you know the people have spent time to prepare and we want you to come and benefit from it. Amen? Praise God. And so, for those who are able to make a contribution to the event, we'd like you to do so. This will help with the refreshment and other things. So please, give your best support towards this and pray that it will be successful and that everyone will be out to have a great time and learn more as we continue to make our, our continue to skill ourselves so that we will serve better in the kingdom of God. Praise God. I think I'm coming down now. So I want to announce that on the 12th, Sister Alma will be celebrating her anniversary. Give a praise for her. Hallelujah. Give another praise. Hallelujah. And I wish Sister, Sister Clark was here today because I'm sure you will give her a kiss. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But we convey our best wishes to you, Sister Alma. And please let Mr. Clark know that we love to see him. We love to see him in church. And we trust that God will continue to bless you, favor you, and make you a blessing. I think he worship at an Adventist church. Right. So, not that we want to take him away, but we love to see him here at Model. Praise God, especially today. So, please convey that to, to him for us. And then by way of birthday, I don't hear, I don't recall us celebrating Brother Carter on the 28th of May. Did we? Oh, because we got power on top, I'm going to see us, so we I don't remember. And I may have been missing on that day when they do so. But again, happy belated birthday, and I trust you had a great time, and that you know the season come over. Continue to enjoy the life that God has given you. Other birthday celebrations, Sister Lorna will be on the 7th. And Sister Alma will be on the 13th. Bless the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to ask Sister Alma to stand as we just sing for you. Amen. Anybody else celebrating this week? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Just 
told Sister Al like this. Sister Al is somebody you have to love, you know, hard-working woman. Praise God. We really appreciate you and your efforts and your service to the Lord. God bless you. And I'm going to ask Sister Ferran just to give you a birthday greeting on our behalf. And then Pastor John will do her part. God bless you. Amen. 
and she come the night and she says, Sister Jack, I wrote the road, I say, you know, may I say, but I can't even scare me, stand up on the road, I'm just trying to scare me, like me, I say. I say, no man, say, amen. And she come back in the night and she's trying to scare me, I'm going to come the line and scare me, and cut up, only and cut up. Amen. Give God, thank you to pray for her. Amen. Thanks to Sister Ferran, Sister Sharon again. Sister Sashana, Sister Juliet, Minister Young, Deacon Carter, Sister Virus, Sister June, Minister Monroe. Yes. I mean, I too. <laughs> For all the persons who have contributed to the success of the, uh, the, 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 the prayer breakfast. Kitchen workers, bless Sister Andrea. Sister Andrea come from St. Anne. Because she said she wasn't going to come. She said, Sister Sharon, Andrea, did you come? Because uh, I had her to pray, but she couldn't pray. She had to be working. Amen. So she came, Sister Charmaine, along with myself, was the first on the scene. We worked to cook the chicken and all that. Minister Monroe, thanks to Sister Rochelle for helping clean up the chicken. Amen. So you can't the and can't cook. No. Amen. So she cleaned up the chicken and all that. And helped with the seasoning as well. Uh, thanks to Minister Young, she wasn't well, but she still came. Because the woman of God, she was the and she came. Brethren, there's this young man I wanted to pray for, Brother Raj. My God. A busy body, but Brother, he can work. A busy body, but he can work. So I have to pray for him that the Lord will just touch him. Amen. Listen. If he did, 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 did so many things that like 10 persons would do. He helped with the stove, he helped with this, he helped with that, he helped, helped, helped. As I said, Raj, you ready? We want 10 of him in the church. Hallelujah! Lord says 10. No, I'm not going to work still enough. I'm not going to work still enough. But he was working. Thank you, Sister Mary. Sister Mary came over and she washed, washed up. Sister Juliet was a friend of mine. She prayed that she can't pray for her. She said she can't take it easy. She's not here today, but give that thanks to her. Minister Arm, um, Evangelist Sharon Bloomfield as well was at the scene working. Minister, Minister Adams, uh, convention woman. That woman, let me tell you something. When you give up your strength to God, God will give you back your strength. Me can tell you about Minister Adams. The woman I walk in a church. I look at her now, still working. Amen. Give her a God a clap. She's supposed to be a What a woman can work too. May she works, she works, she works. She mix tea, she mix tea, so tea. Bless God, as sister Ferran. Bless God for her as well. Bless God for Deacon Carter who came on the scene as well. Give God clap for Deacon Carter. Where is he? I have book Deacon Carter a certain time now. Don't no, book him Saturday evening. Book him Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work on Saturday morning, but Saturday evening, I can't get it. Ah, I was found out that on Sunday Saturday. But he was there helping us out, even though he was tired. Brethren, I pray that you pray my strength. Amen? I was so, so tired. I thank God for Sister Barry. Give it up for Sister Barry. Give it up for me, for our Ella Stewart. Ella Stewart. My God, Mr. Man, you know for him. He was slow as he came in the evening. So when he left, I forgot to tell him to fix the stove. We called Brother um, the Deacon Carter and he said, couldn't reach to come and fix the stove. But there was Brother Raj. So give God thanks for the big department. They are working. Most important to thank God for my husband, Bishop Williams. Give it up for me. He put his foot in on his juice yesterday. No man, that Tuesday was nice. The missing yesterday, Sister Marsha. The drink was very refreshing. I always call him just any juice you want to make. Call him Brother Brett Bishop Williams. At home, he make every drink. Sorry, drink, juice, plum drink. I don't touch drink. Because if I make the drink, the children say, I don't daddy, it. It's not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My God, all of us working. Praise God. Thanks to everyone who made this a success, who came in to worship. 
What I only miss is that most persons weren't here to enjoy the words of Mr. Sean. And we're going to have to fix that. But I want to say thanks again on behalf of Bishop Williams and myself and the leadership team and Reverend French. Thanks to everyone who made this um, first fire breakfast a success. God bless you. And I pray that your store boss, Kisa, will never grow empty. Can I say everybody say, I receive it? God bless you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Truly, only yourself. Like when I came and I saw the table and the decoration, I said, Why? What did you put a key in your mind? You look good. The man said, Yeah. Yeah. But can I put this part away? Yeah, so you only yourself yesterday. It was really lovely. So thank you all again. Uh, as you work for God, He will bless you in return. Bless the name of Jesus. I was still wondering who the winner is in us. I have to tell you, I didn't tell you who the winner is.
I'm sure they are waiting and ready to go. I've been praying for so long. <laughs> Jesus loves the little children.
So we need to hear from God this morning. We need to hear what God has ministered unto his servants to minister to his people this morning. And the word, we not, don't just hear the words today, brethren. Remember the words, write them on the table of your hearts. Study the word to show yourself approved and be obedient to the word of God this morning. And as he speaks the word to you this morning, open up your spiritual ears to hear and understand what God is saying to you this morning because we need to hear from God. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Can we all stand at this time? We need to hear from Reverend French one, 
that one look like this one. Yes, that's how we feel. There are those who feel that they want the best car. So when they drive past, everybody must know that they have passed. Praise God. They have to make statement. Some of us, the way we dress, oh my God. We will go out of our way to make sure that we wear the fatness and the most beautiful. Because when we pass, everybody must see us. Amen. So we build on the earthly treasures. And so God has sent his word today to help us. That yes, it's nice to look good. It's nice to have the finest of life. But are we building for those heavenly treasures? Because whatever we build on this world, in this earth, they will only last for a while. In fact, we work hard for Brother Charter. And when we're dead, we can't carry it with us. And all we treasure it, and all we care it, tomorrow, those who inherit it, they just mash it up. Easy come, easy go. I believe if you were able to turn in your grave, when you look on, you would have turned. Because of how people treat those things which you treasure, they treat it as can't regard. So it don't last, it don't have no significance. Praise God. But when you build your treasures in heaven, it makes a great difference. And God is encouraging us today. Build up your treasures in heaven. Sometimes the treasures here on earth, it is so costly. So you will never attain it. Some people go long them away to know by one car. And they have the deposit. And they go for the car loan. And they say, you're not qualified. Come back. Yes, and they say, bring this, bring that. Sometimes you work hard and you get all the paperwork and you sign up and you make several trips so that you just give up and you never own the car. These are how challenges, challenging it can be to acquire the earth, the treasures. But you see the spiritual one? Very, very easy. But it comes with a sense of discipline. A sense of willingness to give up yourself. So you're not so selfish. You give up yourself so that you can receive the the treasures that are in heaven. So Jesus says to his disciples and to us today in St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So if you mind upon money, at this way will be your treasure. And at this way your heart will be. But God wants us to center our hearts on Him. So no matter how much you have, center the heart on God. No matter how little it is, center your heart on God. Because when it's little, little is much when God is in it. And the Lord is able to help you with the little so that it can multiply and it can stretch so that you can survive. Those that put a whole lot, yes, give God praise for it. But make sure you do not set your heart on it. Yes, if you lose it tomorrow, life goes on. Because God is still alive and well. And trust Him in everything that you do. So some of us, we are very obedient in paying our tithes. Because we really want to build up our treasures. And we, we are storing up in heaven. So we pay our tithes. But when you check on our acts of obedience, many of us fall short. Praise God. So when we have built treasures, it's not just a one-way thing. Amen. There are many processes and many things and many stages to building any building. Praise God. Because there are different parts and different things that must be done in order for the building to be solid and the building to survive any wind and any storm that comes its way. So building your treasures in heaven comes with hard work. Praise God. It's not just, just an easy giving and an offering and you feel that all is well. God desires more. He desires our hearts. He desires our worship. He desires our obedience. Praise God. And so, if we are not following Him, if we are not listening to His voice, we are not going to please Him in every area of our lives. Yes, you please Him in your giving. But there are more. Praise God. And God wants us to please Him in every area of our lives. 
You see, our money, it can be put to work, such as how we invest in an institution. We can put our money to work and invest into heaven. So as we give, we are storing up, we are investing eh, in that treasure that is above. Praise God. But our intentions should not be to seek, to fulfill only, you know, the earthly blessings and to give because we want to have more to survive. Our giving must be that we want to fulfill God's purposes here on earth. Praise God so that he, his kingdom will be announced and others will come into the fold. Praise God. And those who are in the fold, sometimes we have to encourage them that they can stand because in the fold there will be many challenges. There will be many attacks but those who are strong in God, those who are filled up with the power of God, those who are building up in heaven, you have got to be there to encourage those who are weak, to tell them, let the weak say that I'm strong, let the poor say that I'm rich, hallelujah, so we need those who are empowered to be there to lift up the fallen, to lift up those who are weak, because the kingdom of God must carry on. Praise God. And we want the kingdom of heaven to be populated. So you and I have got to work the works of him who sent us while it's day. Because the night comes when no man can work. You ever see how they work yesterday when they work? They still have more to do in them. And they just sit up, Sister Gillian. Yes, come and do no more. They work until they couldn't do no more. Praise God. And that's how the human in us stays. We only can work for a period. We only can give up for one time. You know, for a season. We can't work like machine clockwise 24 7 every day. At some point, we're going to find that we will run down. Yes, even the machine that will stop and give it service. In fact, some of them, when they're making, they say, after so many hours of work, you need to give it so many time of rest. Praise God. So I challenge us as brothers and sisters, as you're building up, as you're storing up in heaven, we have to take care of the body as well. Because as part of all, we're going to be able to build. Praise God. When the body mash down and pop up, it can't build. It can't do what it ought to do. It can't fulfill the purposes of the Lord the way he wants it to be fulfilled. So we've got to take care of the body. Can somebody give a praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look on, you know, the key thing about this scripture is that it shows us that heaven is a secure place. In earth here, sister, sister Haya said, sometimes you want to put your money in the bank and you're free and in fact, Brother Carter, you put it in there and you just leave it. In other little savings account. Just leave it and say, this is for the pension. I can tell you when pension time comes. And you go here, zero dollars there. And you say, oh, come. And they say, you know, we have to take out the dormant fee. Hallelujah. So the dormant fee, they bleed everything. So you have to keep the account active. So sometimes when you don't need the money, you got draw and you put in. Draw and you put in so that the account keep active. Can we give God praise? Once your account becomes inactive and your money anymore, you because know, after a certain time, the crowd can make claims to it. Praise God. So we have to have skills and strategy how to protect the money when we put it up. Can you imagine it, saints? Yes, so we are in a serious time. So the earthly um, place of investment is not solid, but heaven is secure. Whatever we put up in heaven, nobody knows that they can put up, take a diamond fee out of it. Nobody knows that they can teeth it out. Because sometimes when you put your money in the bank, you have those diplomatic managers and skilled computer technocrats that sit down for them, jump to go to work, go sit down, go people are called and take out for them one take out. So when you think them are work, a teeth them go and teeth and plan to open teeth and wear to teeth. So you're in the money. Come! I remember one time when somebody touched the Prime Minister's money at NHT. The Prime Minister and all of the people you want around. The Prime Minister. Oh my God. So they have the limit to them around you know. They must say Prime Minister have enough money. 
money. Prime Minister Singh Sabila, sharing of money. She don't want to sell it to see it here. So let me take out some. I want to take it out. She don't know. Can't remember you only get the refund annually. So by the time that the year come, when they look not none of them, so she just wastes my little, little much pay out. And she may not even be able to question it because she has so much coming into the account. <laughs> Bless God. So this is how people sit down and rub us in this earthly thing. Sometimes when they tell us the interest rate at 3%, when they do the calculation, they say, no man, someone around with this interest payment, and they will quit to tell you, Oh, you never reset on this date, you know, because it's short one day. So when you calculate, that's why. And they have all the excuse. All the excuse to tell you. Sometimes they even tell you that they listen on notice of a rate adjustment. And you never get it. Hallelujah. You never get it enough. But your money has been adjusted. And you have to take it just as it is. Nobody to complain to. Yes, nobody to, to, to argue about because yes, there was a rate adjustment. We have to file. Here's a copy. And your business will never you get your copy early. So here it is now. Praise God. So I put in my money in the American places. I expect to make big return. I plan so we're going to buy house out of it. We have plans so we're going to get a car. This is to finance my child education in college. And when college can come, yes, it's a week so. No money no then ever pay any college bill. So we have to have the right strategy. So rather than putting it into a coat and let it go until dog and fee come, we will gonna buy one scotia meat or our only plan and we pay it every month. And when the time comes of maturity, then there should be something there. Amen. Because once it's a home, it must be paid every month. So you try to remain active. Amen. And wherever the money going to come from, you have to find it. Because if you now pay after a while, you're going to lapse. Amen. And you're going to lose the benefits that you want out of that plan. So there's much to talk about in the financial sector. But the point is, it's never secure. Amen. Even when you, you will purchase insurance, sometimes when you have your claim, they have a full cash flow problem. And you have to wait. In fact, you find out. To tell you, say, they cannot honor your claim. You never did sign the document yet. You never did put this yourself. You never did declare that. And they find all the reasons. Sometimes you have to put a lawyer upon the case. And when you don't pay the lawyer fee, Sister Marsha, none are left. You're tired out. You work out because you have to be a court. You have to be a travel. You have to work up yourself. Take this off. Lose your pain. And you still not have nothing at the end to show up with a lawyer and enjoy the returns. So these are the challenges that we go through in acquiring earthly possession. But you see the spiritual one, God wants us to realize that you can build up. Build up. Because in a heaven, no love there will no matter no rust. No love there to destroy that which you have built there. No teeth, no up there. I sit down and I strategize how much to take out a reverend share and how much to take out a pastor joy share. No teeth, not in there. And the teeth can neither break him and the teeth not in there. Because no sin, no sin at all can enter heaven's gate. Praise God. So that is challenging us. Say, so listen, we waste time and build up on the earth, the preachers and churches here, and they will not last. In fact, they bring a discouragement. Ah, uh, when we get down to the next man, the young man we were reading about, you realize when you hear yourself looking up so the church and how he was disappointed. And I see where when we work hard to build up the treasures and we lose them, we become disappointed. When we hear say, this one, we have to get rid of it because of some reason. It, it, it hurt us to the core. You know, a hard to work for this one. And we think about our sacrifice. But what about the earthly, I mean the heavenly treasures? How do we feel about them? Some people don't start building yet. And God has said, no one is season to build because our time on earth is numbered. And some of us are waiting till next week. Next week when we do this, I will get that. I will start building. But you must build now. You have to make hay while the sun shines. 
Praise God. Because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Amen. So God also know that, you know, money is very important. And he wants us to use it well. You know why you set your heart on it? Because if you love it so much, you now never look him. You can't serve to master. Money by itself is a master. It controls you. Your very actions and your being. You ever find yourself, Sister Cully, with a whole lot of money? When you get up in the morning, when your mother says, um, can, you, can you do breakfast? No, you know what I mean? I do the takeout. And you just order. Because you have it like that. And then she said, then how are you going to get it? I just call a cab. Let me pick it up and bring it. Because you have it. You know, for worry. You know, when others are saying, why well, would not get the money from the put on the pot? You just go order expensive meal because you have it. And this is the way that money now controls you so that you don't even want to get up out of your bed. You stay in your bed and just give orders. You, Jenny, can you come and spread my bed? And when you, Jenny, come and see you in your bed, they say, then, uh, Master, how can I spread the bed? And you're like, go ahead and spread it. I don't feel like getting up today. So, <laughs> and, 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 and it controls them. They don't get down, they operate. Because they feel so important that they don't have to come down. Spread it with me, because I'm not coming down today. You and I have to jump out of the bed because we want a place to a little place to clean and tidy. And we don't have, when we don't want a visitor come, and we place to and tidy. So even when you're poor, you know, I don't have no meal. So they make spread and somebody visits. You look like say yes, you'll have it. Yes, your place look tidy. And I said, why a place look tidy? Look, I shall breakfast already. I wash up our plate already. That I not you know, never put on the fire, you know. But your place just look tidy. And so it gives a different impression. Praise God. And that's how God wants us to operate. In the one if you walk around like say, you pop down and life are uh, bad with you. Because he's in control. So when things short, he's saying to you, come on to me. Come and reason with me. Come and talk it over with me. No one can spread your business but you're hungry and your lack and there's nothing in your cupboard. There is a God who cares for us. And sometimes he has to bring us to this point to get our attention. And even when we get down to that point, sometimes we still not get anything enough attention because it's all about us. It should be all about him. We need him every minute of the day. Praise God. And so when we get into St. Matthew, we realize that this scripture was there to challenge the young man. Challenge him. Because he might ask some big question about how, how to have eternal life. You will have eternal life and you're not ready for it. Yes. Come out of my great position. So tell me how you can have eternal life. Because if you say if you say it comes at a price, I have it. I can pay for it. Yes, you know, realize it comes with sacrifice. It comes with serving God. It comes with staying at His feet. It comes with trusting Him. It comes with living good with your neighbor. Because some of us think we have eternal life and we live bad with our neighbors. Hallelujah! But it comes with living good with people. Ah, and so Jesus, who knew all things, began to challenge him about the, 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 the Ten Commandments. Jesus read out six of them. Young and happy, you know, man, like a lark, smiling and all smiles because he knows say, them the little commandments, so let me keep it up from their youth minister. From their youth. Easy one, that man. That means that we can't get eternal life. No. And Jesus said, no, no, no. You still need something more. You still need to do something more. What about going ahead and selling all that you have? And give to the poor. If you didn't really want eternal life, it would have been exciting to do it. But you see, his God was his treasures. That which he has accumulated. And you find it hard to go give up this. Because this is where his heart is. Where your heart is, there is where your treasure is going to be. And that's where his treasure is. The money, the possession. And so Jesus exposed his weakness. And he left the presence of the Lord very disappointed. If we put our faith in earthly possession, brothers and sisters, when we lose them, we're going to be disappointed. 
We're going to feel like the world hates now. But when you put your faith in God, no matter what storm clouds come to rock your sheep, no matter what the enemy has taken away, you are going to rest in the eye of the storm because God is going to be with you even unto the very end. You realize that his wealth was his idol. He worshipped it and his heart was on it and he felt like because I have this money, I have all the power and I can do all that I want to do. And I can buy eternal life. But Jesus helped him to come to grips with his misunderstanding and so it is for us today. When we hold on to the strange gods, the foreign gods, we cannot have a place in heaven. So we have to let go of the strange gods. Whether it's your money or the assets that you own. Whether it's the children that you're worshipping. Because these are my pension. Yes, I want to tell you to let them go. Continue to love and care for them. But remember that God deserves all. He deserves your worship. Your hallelujah belongs to him. Praise God. You see, in building the heavenly treasure, we have to be willing to give up Whatever God says that we ought to give up. And this man was not ready to do so. We have to have an attitude that will allow nothing to come between we, we and our God. Because may I tell you, there are so much oppositions. So much things that excite us and, in, and entice us. That if you're not careful, your focus of God can be shifted in a very short time. But in the midst of every distraction, every obstacle, you need to turn your eyes up to Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face so that the things of this earth can go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. As you desire to build, you know, the, those treasures in heaven, you've got to have an attitude that keep you from, that keep you from using your God-given wealth selfishly. Because some of us, we have two shillings in them. But I can allow it to happen. And I'm better, you're better than anybody else. And I'm special, you're special more than anybody else. But God has allowed you to have this. And so you must use it to his glory. Use it to his honor. When you give of yourself, when you give of your, your, your possessions to others, especially the poor and needy, you bring glory to God. And he, in return, shall richly reward you. Notice that it's not everybody who followed Jesus. Jesus tell them to sell up what they have. But this man, he was in a particular position where his mind and his heart was all set on his possession. And God is saying, listen, if you're going to serve me, you can't serve that master. So you've got to let it go. Praise God. And so we realized that he was not willing to do it. So obviously, this was what was controlling him. This is where his heart and his treasure is. And so he would not be able to inherit the eternal life that he's asking about. Hallelujah. Jesus knew where his heart was. And so Jesus challenged him. Praise God. Who are you? What, what is your question today? Are you interested in eternal life? Are you interested in building up into your, your, your treasures in heaven? Let it be your desires today. Because if that's your desire, it comes with a sacrifice. It comes with doing something about it. And God is ready to help us even to the very end. Shall we praise his name? So there are six points I want to share with us. How we can store up in heaven. The first one is that we need a new heart. Yes? And every brother, every sister, from you accept the Lord by now, you should have a new heart. You see, firstly, our hearts that we born with, it's a heart of deceit. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 tells us that. So we born with a deceitful heart, a corrupt heart, a heart that is greedy and selfish. Praise God. But now that we have accepted the Lord, we've got to have a new heart. One songwriter says, change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter and I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. So for us to build up in heaven, we need a new heart. 
Because if we have the deceitful heart, all we will think about is to hurt the treasures. All we will think about is to please ourselves. And we cannot build in heaven when we become selfish, when we become uh, setting our minds on earthly things. Shall we praise the Lord? Our desires have to change from the earthly things to eternal things, to everlasting things, to things that will never perish. Praise God. And that will only come when we have a change in our hearts. We have to learn to set our minds on the things that are above, that we are able to, 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 to accept and receive what God has in store for us. Colossians 3 verse 2 tells us that we should set our minds on things above, not on the things of this earth. Praise God. And the second point is that we need to help the poor and the needy. In fact, many of us, we are where we are because God has helped us. But now we have reached. We're not willing to help anybody. We reach. But we must realize that because others have helped us, we in return must help others. If someone had even just pray for you, that was helpful in your journey. If someone didn't just give you a smile or a kind word, that was helpful in your journey. Sometimes you work on schoolwork and you can't reach, you're not sure if you're on the right path. And you call somebody and say, Can you check this for me? You may leave them busy schedule and check it for you. Or you pass with your subjects and so on. You, 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 you throw water for them. Because we have degree now and they have no degree. And you don't realize that they have helped you to reach where you are. Even though they don't reach your level yet. They have helped you to reach where you are. So in this cycle of life, we've got to learn to remember where we're coming from. We've got to learn to help those who have helped us as well. We've got to look out for those who are in need because the kingdom of God is about righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can only have joy when you see how you have helped someone. That's what brings you joy. You can't have joy when you find out that when you look at it, say, wait, I don't want to be this step on to reach over there now. I don't want to be this step on to get yourself. If that's how you're going to review and that's the results you're going to see, it's going to make you disappointed. You're going to be guilt. You're going to feel hurt. You're going to feel sorry for what you have done. But when you have given and you have helped others, sometimes when you're up and the top and you look down, you say, no man. Says, I should have shown him in song. Let me see if he can bring her up. And sometimes you have to stretch so low, Sister Gillian, to reach those who should have been higher. But because of so many challenges in life, they are not where they want to be. So now you are up on the top, full of strength and vigor. Praise God. You can look down and you can reach. No matter what it takes out of you, you can reach for someone. That's how you build your treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. So in order to build up, sometimes you have to go down. Praise God. Some of us, we think we must just be building up, building up. Praise God. But we must realize that in order to build up, sometimes you have to build down. Because from the building to come, it needs a solid foundation. Can I start it up on the top of the sand there, Brother Carter? If you start it up on the sand there, when the wind start blow, everything will blow. So you have to go down, deep down. And the higher you want those treasures to go, is the deeper you're going to have to go down. Hallelujah. Because the foundation must be solid for it to withstand, for it to be able to manage the pressure that we have uh, to go up further. So we've got to look out for those who are in need, those around us who have their different challenges and their situation. Sometimes we, instead of helping people, we compare. Boy, them wear better clothes than me, so they're all right. Maybe a person wash out. Second and close them up, you know. But anyway, they care it to look like a brand new thing. And so we look on and judge them. Not realizing how hard their lives are. But God is saying, begin to be concerned about the poor and needy. For as you give to the poor, you are actually lending to God. And God is no better to any man. He's going to repay you. Hallelujah. That which you have loaned to him. The third point is that we must begin to take risks. 
anybody who invests, they have to take risk. There are different levels to risk. Some people tell you that they are very calculated, they are very, you know, very um, taking their risk taking. But there are those who don't care. They will give just everything one go, and it don't matter if they lose it. So we've got to learn to take risks. So as we build our treasures in heaven, we do things even if it's gonna cost us. Even if it's gonna cost us. Even if you're going to lose your night's sleep, even if you have to up on a 40 day fast, you're willing to do it because you want to fulfill God's purpose and God's plan for your life. Hallelujah. You remember the widowed woman in Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44? The woman gave her a bite, one little dime. Hallelujah. And others who were filled up with riches, and those come and give her a portion. It didn't mean anything to God because it didn't cost them anything. But this woman gave her all. Praise God. So though her, her, her offering is insignificant to what others have given, her offering brought honor to God more than those who were rich. Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. She won't do that in her giving. And that's what God is requiring of us today. Begin to outdo those who are rich and those who are filled up with the material things, don't do them because that's how you're going to build your treasures in heaven. Still coming down. The fourth point is that we need to live a simple life. Praise God. You see, in this life, sometimes we push ourselves, work hard to keep up with the jokes because we want the people to see us in a certain state. We work hard for success. We work hard to keep up and we become exhausted, empty. And discontented because we don't achieve what we want in the process. But I want to say to us, be on your guard against greed. Be on your guard against wanting an abundance of possession. Because when you set your heart on these things, Luke 12, 15, it can destroy you. You can lose out upon serving God. And God wants you to live for Him. God wants you to serve Him. God wants you to hold on to this life loosely so that you can fix your gaze on Him. Eternal life. You can fix your gaze on Him. Because what? The things here, you just loosely hold them. You just loosely um, hold them so that you just enjoy them until that day. Shall we bless the Lord? The fifth point is that we must seek the kingdom of God. Seek his kingdom first. Praise God. Begin to pursue Jesus above everything else. Begin to surrender everything to him. Everything that you own, begin to surrender it to him. Jesus knows our very needs. And so as you seek for his kingdom, as you seek for his righteousness, Matthew 6, 33 tells us that he will add all things unto us. So whatever we desire, stop worrying about it. Just continue to seek the righteousness of God. Continue to seek the kingdom of God. Continue to pray that God's will will be done in your life. And he's going to favor you by adding to your lives. Praise God. You have to have an heavenly mindset. Praise God. Have a heavenly mindset. And this will free you from the values found on the earth. So that you can keep your mind and your heart on Christ. Praise God. When you have a heavenly mindset, you can keep your heart and your mind on Christ. And that's very important. The sixth and final point is that we must trust the promises of God and we must do and we must not be anxious for anything. Praise God. Don't worry about this life. God's got it all in control. Matthew 6 verse 25. You see, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. God can free us from the false sense of security that money gives. That possession gives. So you have it. You feel like you're in control. You feel like nothing can go for you. And God can help you to get rid of that false sense of security. You see, with the Holy Spirit, you can live a life where worry does not happen.
have to hold you captive. The pressures of life can hold you captive. In this harsh economic climate, you can be held captive. You want that church, the army has spent your bills. And that with you, you can't get up and get ready. Because all you have seen your bills with you, and how am I going to pay it? It holds you captive. But God is saying, I can release you by my Holy Spirit. Praise God. So if you find yourself to be rich today, Timothy 6 verse 17 through 19 helps us to find the strategy that we need. He says that those who are rich, they should not be haughty. So get rid of the haughty spirit, the proud spirit. Praise God. Get rid of it and begin to serve God faithfully so that your life will draw others to Him. Don't set your hope and on the uncertainty of the riches, but set your hope on God. God, God richly provides for his people everything that you have. Even the unsaved, God provides for many of them. Because he gave them that they lack nothing, so they don't have any excuse to serve him. But yet they do. And God is saying, my brother, my sister, I've given much to you. In return, serve me. Build up your enemy treasures because this life on earth will soon be over and I want you to live with me in paradise. Instead of rich, we should do good. To be rich in our good works, that's important. Be generous and be ready to show forth the mercies and the kindness of the Lord, that's how we store up our treasures. And, and, and for, we have to look at ourselves. Make sure that our foundation in God is secure. And we have to take a hold of everything that is there to distract us, to discourage us. We've got to pay attention to that. We've got to pray that they be removed. We've got to nullify the effects, the effects of those that fights against us because our desire is eternal life. In closing, I repeat the song, many things about tomorrow. Yes, I don't seem to understand, yes. but I know who holds the future, and I know who holds my hand. Brothers and sisters, we are building to reign with the Lord. But if our hearts are not set on him, we will not build wisely. Don't be like the foolish man who builds on the sand. Rain comes and the storm comes and everything blows away. But be like the one who is wise to build on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. So no matter how tempest the storm is, no matter how the billows roll, you will still withstand because God is with you. You are connected to the source. Many things about tomorrow, we don't understand. We don't know if tomorrow is the end. So let us build today. Let us do what we can today. Leave nothing for tomorrow. And don't be anxious for anything. But in everything, through prayer and supplication, make your requests be known unto the Lord. God bless you today. I know who holds the future. And I know who holds my hand. Many things about tomorrow can we understand? I don't see
are precious. And this morning you have spoken to us. Oh God, you have focused our attention on what matters. Yes, Lord, some of us are very poor spiritually. Oh, my God, but as you, we look into your word today, oh, we are reminded, Lord, that the material things are temporary and they will, will they will not last. Oh God, they are just here for a short time. My God, we will enjoy them only in this life. Oh God, but what you offer us, the eternal life, the sacrifice that you gave, is, is, is permanent, Lord. We cannot lose that. We thank you, Lord, that you thought about us, mighty God. That you secure our salvation and you built a home for us, Lord. Oh God, our habitation is eternal. You have given us homes and houses here on earth, but they are temporary. Oh God, but you have given us an eternal abode. Oh, mighty God, and you said to your disciples, if you go, you will come again and receive us unto yourself that we are, you are there, we may be also. Lord, we thank you today as you have spoken through your man, servant, as he has been obedient to you, giving the word ever so often, so timely. Oh God, giving it to us in doses that we can appreciate and we can manage. Oh God, we thank you for your word this morning. For Lord, we want to be my uh, spiritually rich. Oh God, that's where our attention ought to be. We want to be rich with holiness and in all we give to others. We want to be rich. Oh God, in all we treat those who are less fortunate. We want to give and not count the cost. And Lord, we want to give and not be showy. Oh God Almighty, you said what we give in our right hand, we should not let let our left hand know, my God. Oh, we thank you for those who have been giving and not been saying anything. Oh, God, and you said you will publicly bless those ones. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, and we pray that as your word go out today, that we will indeed be holy in our, in our living, in our walk with you, in our journey. Oh, God Almighty, because only that life that's lived for you will last. Oh God, we thank you that you can see our hearts. <laughs> thank you, Lord, that you can see our hearts. Man, look at your outward appearance, but you are always looking at our hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray for Bishop Williams today that you will continue to touch him, strengthen him, Lord, as those sweat pour out of his body. Oh God, I pray. Hallelujah. That you will reinvigorate him today. Oh God, refresh him, restore him. Physically and spiritually, Lord. Do it for your man's servant today. Oh God Almighty, continue to open your words to him, Lord. Continue, Lord, to pour into his heart. Oh God, I thank you for how you've been using him. Oh God, here and elsewhere, how you have been speaking through him as he allowed himself to be used by you. Lord, and I pray that you will continue to enrich him. That you will continue, Lord Jesus, oh God, to make him rich with the word so that some poor soul will receive it and become rich in all that you will have. Oh, mighty God, we thank you for the kingdom. Lord God, that is open to all of us. We pray, God, that you will continue to open our eyes to see that none will be poor in the spiritual kingdom. Yes, Lord, because no moth or rust will gather there because you will be the light. Hallelujah. You will be the accountant. You will be the banker. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You are our source today. Yeah, God, you are the bathroom today. Help our church to know that our job is not the source, Lord. Oh, God, those who are giving to us, they are, they are not the source. Oh, for what we need, but you are our source today. Thank you, Lord, so we can follow you. Lord, we don't have to move away from your presence like that young ruler who was so distraught. Because we know where our income lies, where our source is, and it's all in Jesus. We bless you for this portion of the service. And as we go into the Lord's Supper, Lord, 
to dine with you. May you meet us again. We thank you for the moderator, Lord, today who moderated the service. Oh God, may you continue to lead Sister Ramona French Collins as she continues to get into your word and to dig deeper. Oh my God, to move from the surface down into the depths of, of who you are. Lord, you promise to bless. Oh God, so bless her and her family. Bless your church, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As Bishop prepares to come and just to lead us in the Lord's Supper, I just want to say that, you know, we invite everyone to remain just for another 20 minutes or so as we, today is um, set aside for a Lord's Supper and just to remember what Jesus did on the cross for us. You know, just to say, Lord, we want these emblems. We want to take them into our spirit for this week. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know that your blood is powerful against everything and anything that the enemy can do to us. So the emblems is a symbol of that. And so we should not, you know, move away or refuse or not take up the opportunity when it is given. So for the next 20 minutes, you know, we want to spend the time to get into the word of God. And just to see what is there again for us. Because every time we go in, there is something new and different. We can sing one verse from hymn number 94. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Praise God. And I'm going to invite you to come a little closer. Those who are taking supper, just come up a little closer. We won't be much longer as we spend time together with Jesus. And Pastor Joy and the, and the other ministers can get ready to come. Amen. So let me welcome everyone to another Lord's Supper. For those who are not partaking and like you are here, we want to say we hope that pretty soon you will be able to share with us because this is an experience that is very, very important in our Christian journey, you know. And as you seek for eternal life, as you seek to reign with God eternally, we've got to follow all the principles, all the things that God has said that we must do. And this is one. So Jesus, as he was with his disciple, he shared the supper with them. And he told them to continue to do it as an example. Now Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, 
from verse 23 to 26. He was not at the 12, among the 12, but he shared with us today as he shared with the brethren in Corinth. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death until he comes. Praise God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Hallelujah. As we look at this scripture today, one of the things that comes to me is the cup. The cup. When we think about the cup, it actually symbolizes the entire experience, the ordeal that Jesus went through. Praise God. So when we talk about the cup, we're thinking about the sacrifice. We're thinking about the suffering, the pain, the agony. It all represents the cup. Sometimes as a, a worthy or someone who have done well, we are given cups. Signal, signal, uh, signifying our achievement, our hard work, and congratulating us for what we have done. So cup stands a very important role. It can be given as an award, it could be given as a penalty. Jesus gets it like a penalty. But many of us, we have received cups that really were symbolic of an, our achievement. In fact, we see the name of the institution that given it to us. Sometimes they declare that you have completed 12 glorious years of service. And every time you dust your cabinet or your bread front and you see that cup, you feel excited that yes, I have achieved, I have worked, I have done something. And so it is with Jesus. Every time he sits at the right hand of the Father and he looks down and sees us living righteously, he feels a sense of accomplishment. He feels that his life was not given in vain. Shall we bless the Lord? And the cup also, as we see here in verse 25, Jesus took the cup. This was symbolic of what he would be going through. So he took the cup to show that this cup represents the New Testament, the New Covenant in his blood. Hallelujah. And Jesus says that you must drink of it often in remembrance of him. So this cup is important. And Jesus lifted the cup. He gave thanks and he sucked of it. I'm glad that he sucked up the cup. Because, yes, first, to show that, listen, I am it for you. Yes. Hallelujah. And I want you to, 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 to continue to drink up the cup so that you'll be reminded of the sacrifice. Yes. Praise God. So none of us need to go back to Calvary. None of us need to die on the cross anymore. Jesus paid it all. But he wants us to remember this once and for all because it's very important. This is not an act that must be forgotten. This is not a life that must be ignored. So as often as you can drink of this cup, drink of it. Because you are doing it in remembrance of me. So the cup here is symbolic. Jesus drank of the cup. Then he went through the experience. And as a reward, he was risen from the grave. And he now is now sit down at the right hand of the Father. But you and I, forever, forever, long we are on this earth, we must continue to drink of the cup. Don't say that Jesus done it and it's over. He wants us to drink of the cup, to be reminded of the sacrifice. And so, as a church, we choose every first Sunday to have the Lord's Supper. Representing how often we're going to do it. Some people do it every week. Some people do it quarterly, some people do it annually, and that's how they symbolize often. But we do it monthly. Hallelujah. And God is saying, I want you to continue 
to share in this meal. I want you to remember the cup. Remember the sacrifice. Remember the covenant, this new covenant that I've established through my blood. Praise God. So the cup holds the blood which symbolizes, you know, it holds the wine which symbolizes the blood that Jesus would shed. And so the cup is a container also that holds and sometimes when we come to a service like this, broken and distressed and worn, we come with our cups empty and dry. And we lift them up in the service. Sometimes we will lift up the cups, Sister Jillian. Nobody don't know, so we come up turn. And they can't see it. They have to be in the spiritual realm to know that your cup is being lifted. And while the service is going on, all you're there saying in your mind, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. So the cup is important. Because if you want to be whole, if you want to be filled, you must have a cup. You must have something that the Lord can pour out in. And so when you come to the Lord's Supper, we're coming for a filling. We're coming to receive something new from the Lord. Do you have your cup today? Do you left your cup at home? Now leave it next first Sunday. Ah, now leave it next week. Because I'm sure the men have a word for us from the Lord. And we want the cup to be filled. I'm glad that our cup is a cup that is multi-purpose. If a word, it can hold it. If at the anointing, it can hold it. If the Holy Spirit has moved, the cup is there to contain him. Praise God. Hallelujah. And sometimes some of us cup, why others can't see because of our cup of our heart. Praise God. And we can lift our hearts uh, before the Lord. Repentant heart. A heart that is broken. Yes, a heart that you know, God will never despise. We can bring it to him and say, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up until I overflow. Whatever your cup is, whatever you use to symbolize your cup, begin to lift them up to the Lord today. And say, come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. We don't want a half full cup. Because the half full may have done before the day done. We want a full cup. And tomorrow, even when you're by yourself in your emotion or otherwise, begin to ask again. Because God is an all-sufficient God. And every time we call on Him, and our cups are upturned, He's able to fill us up. One summer to say, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up to that overflow. Do you want to live in the overflow? Or do you just want to live in a cup that has space and capacity that more can just come in? We want to fill up. Because you see, when God is filling up, the more He pours into us, the things that are not of us, they get a chance to be in. They get a chance to overflow. They get a chance to come out. Because the Lord will continue to fill us up. So I want to be filled up. So that every impurity, every selfishness, Every deceitfulness, every sinfulness being, you know, removed as the Spirit of God continue to fill up my cup. Make sure you have your cup. And remember that the cup is the New Testament of a Jesus' blood. And as often as you drink of the cup, you do it in remembrance of him. Shall we bless the Lord? Praise God. I'm going to ask Pastor Joy to do the serving. Praise God. And I'm going to ask Reverend French to assist her while they serve us today. Praise God. And Sister Ramon, I want to tell you, this sing hymn number 558. I think it is. I have Jesus, I my cross have taken all to leave and follow thee, destitute, despised, forsaken, thou from X my own shall be. Jesus, I, my cross have taken all to thee and follow thee.
after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sought, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death until he come. Drink of the cup, saints. So it's the one that will lead us into a song while well, first we need to give God thanks and then we we'll go into the song where the connect continues will be connected. So at this time I'm gonna ask um Lika Carter, can you just pray, you know, that I return a prayer of thanks to the Lord for what we have received of him today. Praise God.
its power. I'm so glad that it still flows. Praise God. Is there any testimony? We'll take two quick testimonies just before we go. The time is far spent, but if you do have something to share, please do so now. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Working God is a miracle. 